In this podcast episode, I'm going to talk about five effective ways parents can foster emotional resilience in their children. If like me or someone that struggles with their mental health, yes, I know it's a pain in the ass, but you are not alone, as you'll see from this podcast. Hi there, my name's James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Talking about resilience, every week for the past two or three years, I've been uploading content to try and support other parents, specifically dads, and I suppose even more specifically dads like myself who often struggle with mental health. If you want to try and help me beat the invisible force field that is the Apple Podcast algorithm and would feel kind enough to listen to as much of this podcast as possible, even if you let it run while you nip off for a wee, that would be hugely appreciated. Right, that's enough preamble of me asking you to do stuff. My first suggestion, how you can help your children to build emotional resilience, encourage open communication. So make sure you always listen actively, as opposed to doing what most people do, which is basically just listening until it's their chance to talk. Actually listen, and make sure your child feels heard and understood by giving them your full attention, especially when they express their thoughts and feelings. In the modern world, where we all seem to be completely losing our ability to concentrate for more than three seconds, the absolute gift of someone giving you their undivided attention is about as rare a commodity as you will get. Also, make sure to normalize emotions. Teach your children that it's absolutely okay to feel sad and angry or frustrated. And when they feel these extremes of emotions, make sure you show that by validating their feelings, especially without judgment. This will help them to understand that emotions are actually just a normal part of life. And the idea of trying to go through life happy all the time is completely unrealistic and actually not very helpful. And the third element at this point, model expressive language. Make sure that you model the language and the behavior that you want to see in your children. So use emotional language in everyday conversations. If your kids see that you're happy to talk about your emotions and be honest about your vulnerabilities, that will only empower them to do the same. And the second way for parents to help make their children more emotionally resilient, teach them problem solving skills. So what exactly do I mean by this? When your children face a problem, try to guide them towards a solution as opposed to just solving it for them instantly. If you can guide them through the process of finding a solution, rather than just solving it for them, you will have taught them a valuable life skill. You can do this by asking open-ended questions like, what do you think you could do? Doing this is gonna encourage them to start doing critical thinking. And it's also gonna really empower them when they realize that actually they're much more capable of solving their own emotional problems than they realize. And I think it's always important to reframe situations. Instead of something they're going through at school which might be making them feel emotional, instead of saying this is a good or bad situation, it's just a situation. It might be more challenging, but it doesn't make it a bad situation. And you can actually explain to the people in life who face the most adversity end up becoming the most skillful and resilient human beings. You can do this by encouraging them to brainstorm. If you help them to brainstorm different solutions, weighing up the pros and cons of each option, this process is going to build confidence in their ability to handle all challenges. You're doing your children a massive disservice if you just fix everything for them forever. And it's very difficult as a parent because all you want to do is keep your children safe and happy and loved for as long as possible. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that actually introducing them to a bit of adversity, obviously making sure they're always safe, doesn't do them any harm. If you keep your children overprotected in a cocoon, then they're gonna get an enormous fright when suddenly they actually have to stand on their own two feet and do things like pay the bills or manage a car or successfully navigate adult relationships. And a third way for parents to make their children more emotionally resilient, help them to foster a growth mindset. Make sure that you praise their effort, not just their success. I remember at school, we used to get a mark for ability and a mark for effort. And my parents always made a much bigger deal about the effort, which is lucky because I was pretty thick. There's probably nothing more frustrating for a parent to see a child who's naturally skillful and talented being a bit lazy. I would much rather have it the other way around. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And the older I get, the more I see that when it comes to success, it's just about turning up, staying consistent, staying disciplined, and just staying in the game. 
If you stay in the game longer than everyone else, you're going to win the game. The guys I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with, who train four or five times a week, might not be as naturally skillful or athletic or strong as the guy who turns up pretty sporadically, but it's no surprise that when they end up rolling with him, they smash him because they just continue to turn up and work on their craft. So if we can focus on praising our child's efforts rather than their outcome, it's going to really help them. This is going to teach them that persistence and hard work are really valuable, regardless of the results. You actually learn a lot more about yourself and the world around you when you don't get the result you want at the first attempt. And this leads nicely onto the idea of framing failures as learning opportunities. If you can help your child to see mistakes and setbacks just as opportunities to learn and grow, rather than seeing them as a reflection of their abilities, that's going to really help. I think the adults who are still keen to learn things in their 40s and 50s were probably lucky enough to have parents who did this really effectively. And the fourth way for parents to make their children more emotionally resilient, cultivate self-compassion. Teach your children to have positive self-talk, but limit the chance of them getting bullied at school by telling them to do it in their own mind, as opposed to out loud. But if you can encourage your child to speak kindly to themselves, especially during tough times, and get them to replace negative self-talk about themselves with affirming statements of I am strong, I am capable, I am hardworking, I am kind. That will be helping them to realize they can overcome stuff, building their self-esteem, and helping to show they can overcome adversities. It's probably also more likely to make them more compassionate human beings than to model self-care yourself. If you show your child how to take care of their emotional needs by embracing and practicing self-compassion yourself, that's going to be a really effective way to get them to look after themselves. Let them see you taking breaks. Let them see you asking for help. Let them see you being kind to yourself. I'm just going for a nap because I'm a bit tired. Just going to go and meditate in the garden for 10 minutes and feeling a bit stressed out. Just going to go and make up a ridiculous ukulele song to put in a podcast. I know I've already had a chocolate biscuit today, but I just fancy another one and I deserve it. And a fifth way for parents to make their children more emotionally resilient, promote healthy relationships. You're going to get a lot more emotional support by like-minded, positive people around you who are on your side than reading a book about it. One of the main reasons that we're living through a loneliness epidemic is that we are spending less and less time in the face-to-face -face company of other people. If you can encourage your child to build and maintain healthy relationships with their friends at school, with family members, with other positive adults in their life, this will really help them. Strong social connections provide emotional support. And make sure to teach your children empathy. If you can help your child develop empathy by discussing others' perspectives and feelings, role-playing scenarios or discussing characters and stories can be a really effective way to practice this skill. Hello, mate. Are you okay? You can have an ice cream now, but then that means no pudding. Yes, that's fair. Good negotiation skills. These five strategies, when consistently applied, are going to significantly enhance your child's ability to manage stress, adapt to change, and bounce back from adversity, which in turn will make them more emotion resilient. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you feel like being super awesome and want to leave me a review, that would be massively appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers, and guides.